Okay. Um, <clears throat> hey guys. Um, so right now, um, I wanted to. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do a series of videos about the program config on OpenBSD. Um, <clears throat> the reason why this is important is because if you uh, want to compile a kernel on OpenBSD, um, you're supposed to navigate to this um, directory. Once you've got the source code, you know, installed um, or downloaded, uh, you're supposed to navigate to this directory and then run make obj, uh, which is essentially going to um, create this directory, this obj directory right here, which is just a symlink um, to this directory, which is slightly different. Instead of sys arch, all this stuff, it's user obj sys arch all this stuff. Um, <clears throat> this is the directory where all of the files that config creates are stored. Um, this is where all of the meaningful output of config goes. Um, <clears throat> you are um, after you, but that's, you know, it does not put any of these files here. That's what config does. Um, so then config, you're supposed to run make config um, and that creates all these files um, based off of configuration files um, which are stored at various places in um, the sys directory um, which is sys is the same thing as user source sys um, but spread throughout this um, file system or this subtree of the file system is configuration files that describe either um, the capabilities of uh, the OpenBSD kernel running on various uh, architectures like AMD64 or you know 32-bit x86 or ARM whatever um, <clears throat> config you know starts you know looks for those uh, files and uh, you know creates um, all of the files in here so you know I've taken some notes on this and just to get some of these preliminaries out of the way um, because make files are weird it's like make files are weird the make program is weird and um yeah i don't love it but it essentially looks like when you run make config you know in the standard situation this is what actually gets passed um and the way um that you verify that essentially um if we come over here to main um, in the config program um, and you know you can ignore this pledge it doesn't matter um, none of these other flags get passed as you can see um, just dash b and dash s and then this extra argument for the configuration file um, <clears throat> dash b sets b flag and dash s sets s flag as well as builder and sourcer. Um, the only way that I was really able to verify that this is what actually gets passed, um, because it, I wrote some test programs or some test make files, and it seems like based on those test make files that sys arch AMD64 or whatever. Um, instead of user source sys, it would just be sys in front. That doesn't really matter because they're symlinks to the same thing, but I just thought that was kind of weird. Um, 
But yeah, anyway, B flag and S flag don't ever get modified throughout the program, and then they actually get printed out uh, at the end of um, this make file uh, right down here. So that's how I was able to verify what actually gets like passed um, when we do this. So um, in any case, um, <clears throat> that's sort of like, you know, this is what happens when you set those flags. Um, you know, B flag and S flag don't get changed throughout the entire program. Uh, builder is like, that's, um, <clears throat> that's, you know, this directory, right? So it's, it's, you know, hey, like, where do you want to store all the output of the files that config makes? Um, and sourcester is like, where do you want to read your configuration files from? Because you don't have to store your, like, source in user source sys or in sys. Um, <clears throat> you can store it anywhere you want, although it's not recommended. Um, but so that's to handle that situation. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And then, you know, this is just to make sure that we didn't, like, uh, pass any, uh, you know, this is just to make sure that you're using the program right. <clears throat> uh, this B flag, um, right? So like if we did create a build directory, then that means we're gonna, you know, change out of <clears throat> the directory that config was called from, um, which again, um, <clears throat> is at the very end of this make file. So if you wanna rerun make config, this does it for you. Um, <clears throat> and essentially, this is the directory where we started. You know, it says to start from this directory, I guess. Um, that doesn't seem right, though. Why would it be user obj? Maybe I'm uh, mis uh, misconfiguring that. But, uh, yeah. No, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, so it's just going to CD back into the, like, <clears throat> I don't actually know. This starter is the current working directory, um, which um, it looks like actually is set to be this directory. Um, anyway, this all this preliminary stuff isn't super important for what config actually does. I'm just trying to give like a broad outline um, of like setup. Um, like conf file is the file. This is actually important. You know, this is where we start reading um, the configuration from. Um, and this first file function sets up our our scanner to start reading the configuration from there. Um, <clears throat> that's going to be this last argument that we pass. Um, yeah, and then we initialize some variables. Um, min max users and max max users uh, they simply um, bound this d max users parameter. So you can see this says eighty. Um, if you like, you know, these can change actually during the run of config, of config, but after a certain point, it can't change anymore. Um, so yeah, later on, I think this gets changed to be between like one and two fifty six or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah. It's important for like allocating how much space you're going to give to certain things when you compile a kernel. Um, so that's what that goes to. This init intern just sets up a string hash table. Um, so, you know, 
when you want to compare strings, if there's only one copy of the string in the entire program, you can just compare the pointers to the strings, and uh, that suffices uh, for a comparison. Because if there's only one copy, then you can just compare the address that it's stored in memory. And if that's the same, then you know it's the same string. Uh, otherwise, they're different. You know, if you have multiple copies of the same thing, then you'd have the same string stored at different locations. But <clears throat> with strings that we need to compare later, we'll end up storing them in that strings hash table so that we only have to compare the pointers. Um, th you know, that's basically it. Um, this init files. Um, let me see if I missed anything. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so it sets up various things related to files. So um, we'll see when we get into the grammar. There are lines that I call file lines um, that say, like, hey, compile this file into your kernel. Um, and <clears throat> Base tab is just a hash table of like the last component of the path name for the file. So like, you know, say your file is um you know, like sys kern and then like init main.c. Um init main is going to be the base because when this gets compiled it's going to get compiled into a file called init main.o it's going to get compiled into that object file before everything gets linked together um, so you need to make sure that there's no other you know like I don't know CD um, you need to make sure that there's like no uh, dev PCI init main dot o. Um, so that's just to make sure that you don't get any conflicts with your dot o files. Um, yeah. Uh, path tab, like, it holds the last, so you can, in those file lines, you can list multiple paths that a, like, file can come from. Um, this path tab holds the actual file path that the source comes from. Um, if you've got more than one, which you almost never do, um, then it just stores the last one. Um, but yeah, it's supposed to prevent us from defining the same file twice is my best guess. Um, it's really not super important because path tab, uh, like, you know, those file lines almost always only have one possible path that you can get the source code from. Um, next file is just pointer a pointer to the end of the like all files list. So every time you know we have a file line, we create a file object, and this points to the end of it. And those file objects objects are a giant linked list. Um, so unchecked, yeah, we'll um, yeah. Next file unchecked, they initially point just to all files, but then each time we add a file. We put a pointer to where next file uh, points to. Basically, next file keeps track of the end of the list so that we don't have to traverse the entire list every time we want to add a new file object. Um, unchecked gets uh, moved to the end of the all files linked list every kind of time we call check files, um, which we call to make sure that any file line that has a needs count option um, only uses uh, dev bases as its options for including it. We'll see what that means later, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's basically just an additional pointer to see what we've checked. Um, so, um, init sem. Um, creates the attribute table, config hash table, um, device instance table, you know, sets a bunch of stuff up for things that we'll see when we get into the grammar, which is really what the meat is, meat of the program is.
Um, but yeah, we're just setting stuff up. Um, we set up the device base tab uh, table in main. Same with the device attachment table because I believe we need it for something that's done in this file as opposed to being done in uh, the file sim.c. Sim.c stands for semantics, which is like where you actually do stuff um, with the part, you know, the parser. Um, yeah, uh, select tab is pretty important. Um, if you have a file that's only supposed to be included optionally, um, this is where the options are stored in select tab. So like if it's only supposed to be included if you have a certain option, um, you look up the option in select tab to see if it's there. Um, if it's not, then you don't include the file, basically. Um, we'll expand on that a little bit later. Um, the need count tab, um, we'll put some device bases. Um, when you have a file line that uses needs count, um, you put any of the devices that are, you know, needing counts into this need count tab um, because later we'll check to make sure that they actually have a count. Um, so more or less, I don't want to get into too many details because this is supposed to be uh, pretty quick. This op tab is where we store some options. Um, this make op and def opt um, aren't used. This next opt is just a pointer to the end of the options list so that you don't have to traverse it the whole time whenever you want to add a new one. Um, this last component, all this stuff does not matter for the default configuration. So yeah, now we're into like YY parse. Um, and that's where the meat of the program is. So yeah, <clears throat> um, hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, or hopefully, I don't know, it sort of mentally prepared you to see um, oh, I did not mean to do that. Um, yeah, hopefully this sort of mentally prepares you for what this program looks like. Um, you know, maybe just as a quick um, side note, um, this is these are all of the source files for this program. Um, and some of them aren't used like so config has like two separate modes um, and this like UKC UKC uh, util those aren't used for um, this you know part of the program that we're looking at so and I don't think CMD or CMD.HR either this is the manual page for it um, so the files that we're going to be looking at mostly are going to be main um, and we'll just show you how many lines there are in all of these. Um, files.c, gram.y, scan.l, um, you know, all of these like make files, um, pack, and sim. So, you know, you can see they have, you know, some of them are kind of long. Uh, Sim.c is the longest, but, you know, for the most part, it's a reasonably sized program, but it's not so big that it's, like, daunting if you're, you know, trying to expand your ability to read C and understand larger programs. It's a pretty good start. So, uh, yeah. Um, next time we'll be looking a lot at these two files, gram.y and scan.l, and start to look at sim.c. All these three files kind of work together. Um, that's where you know we read the configuration files, and then <clears throat> in files.c, pack.c, make swap, make make file, make ioconf, and make headers. That's where we do stuff with the information that we read in from the configuration file. So, yeah. Hopefully that uh, 
prepares you a little bit uh, to understand this program. And uh, we'll get into the, the nuts and bolts a little bit more uh, next time. Start getting into the grammar and configuration and all that stuff. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah. Hopefully you learned something. See ya.